Welcome uh, to uh, week three of our show, Mary. We appreciate you being here. So, listen, we all watch this balloon uh, trans, uh, transact around the, uh, uh, around the country, transact, float around the country. <laughs> but it seems like that's emblematic for so much more that's been happening over the decades with China and the U.S. Talk to us about it. Well, first of all, congratulations on the new show. It's it's great to be here in Dagan. I hope that um, I do better than Steve Moore uh, just in that last <laughs> segment. You're not wearing um, glasses, you're but, lucky. But you know, yeah, yeah perfect. I'm, I'm out of the firing zone. Um, but but to the bottom line here, look, um, you know, Nixon opened to China because he wanted to get out of Vietnam, and we were fighting the Soviet Union at the time. So he had a good reason to open to China. And frankly, for many decades, we didn't perceive them as a threat. I mean, you look at photographs from the 80s when they're, you know, riding around in bicycles in their Mao suits. And I think, unfortunately, what happened was with the war on terror, we took our eye off the ball. And as China's economic power grew and they started to, to develop all of these capabilities and to do all the things that you just laid out there, Dagan, um, we really weren't paying attention. And it wasn't until the last administration that we woke up and the American people woke up and the world woke up to the threat that this poses. But, Sean, uh, you know, this balloon casually floating over the continental United States, I think that's a turning point because Americans don't generally feel threatened in our homeland, mm -hmm. right? We've got two oceans. We've got friendly neighbors. Yeah, we, you know, we had the threat of nuclear war at the Soviet Union, but that, that wasn't something tangible. You couldn't look up in the sky sky and see it. And I think, you know, the visual of, of watching this thing be allowed to just travel casually over the heartland of our country, I think really brings home to a lot of Americans the fact that this is a new era. And without U.S. deterrence and strong action, we do face a threat here in the homeland. It's real. And, and Mary, I, I was talking about how I grew up, but it was really and the, the jobs disappeared overseas. And so people where I, in my hometown, traded a great uh, middle class life for cheap crap made in China that they could put in their yard and low paying jobs at Walmart. But it really, it became dangerous, as you said, starting in 2001 when China entered the World Trade Organization, the WTO, and we, ref we never fought back as they cheated and cheated and cheated and stole and stole intellectual property as corporations entered China. And we had very low inflation because of the, all of the goods we were importing from China. And companies were getting rich at, by moving production to China, and we got cheap iPhones and the like. But then there was the, the thievery, but also the increasing espionage, and the goal changed, particularly under Xi Jinping. And you were pointing out, just the, in terms of spying, China was targeting the Federal Reserve over a decade to build an informant network and access data. We found this out last year because of the Republicans. And where was the outrage then? Everybody should be quaking in their boots because of that. Well, we're, I mean, we're in a very complicated situation now, Dagan, because you're right. We've tied our economy to basically to an enemy. And when I talk to our clients, you know, they, they feel like, wait a second, we're in this sort of gray zone now. For 40 years, we were told to invest. And now, all of a sudden, we're perceiving this panoply of risks to our, our, our people, our reputation, uh, to our supply chains, uh, legal risk, you know, all, all manner of risk. And, and so we're not at the point where the U.S. government has deemed China an enemy, although we're behaving rightly, I think, as if it is. And so you see both the Trump and the Biden administrations took actions that are kind of edging us there when it's obvious what we're facing. I mean, look at, look at the actions on semiconductors, right? So we cut off uh, the ability for Huawei to access really high-end chips. The Biden administration expanded that, and they said, you can't send manufacturing equipment that allows Huawei to make chips. Why? Because we're treating it 
like it's a piece of military equipment, which it is, because it's being used right. for military purposes to build their AI, to build their big data uh, capabilities. I mean, if you to really understand the threat from China, you know, my, my fear is that we're, we're just focusing on, you know, these discrete little things. They're not little, right? But it's easy for politicians to talk about things like TikTok, okay? It's going to be a really easy thing to ban them. But what we ought to be talking about is the bigger picture, right? Uh, the Million Man Army, the biggest Navy in the world, the third largest air force, biochemical weapons programs, space programs, hypersonic missiles, tested uh, hundred, more than 100 ballistic missiles last year, more than 300 nuclear weapons. I mean, come on. Uh, this is what the president needs to talk about and needs to explain to the American You're people. Right. Um, that's the kind of leadership that we need, because the American people will support, as Nixon used to say, they'll support a just cause. Uh, they have great tolerance for a great amount of pain and sacrifice, but we have to talk about it, has to be explained, and we have to prepare, and we have to do it now. And the mindset has to change. They don't make trinkets anymore, they make supercomputers. And we have to ingrain that in the American psyche and see them as a complete uh, and utter risk. Mary Kissel, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.